What's up guys, the Comics Kid 2099 here, and I want to talk to you about a graphic novel that I recently read, Fear Agent, Volume 6, Out of Step. This is the final volume of Fear Agent, and so after I finish reviewing this book, at the end of this video, I'm quickly going to talk about my overall thoughts on the entire Fear Agent series, uh, since this is a series that I've only been reviewing as I read it. I hadn't read any of the series before I started doing these videos, so I want to talk to you about what I felt about this series at the end of this video. But first, I'm going to review the book itself. So basically, uh, we've had two alien species that have kind of been alternating as the big bads of the Fear Agent series from the beginning. You have the Dressites, who are responsible for basically annihilating all of the life on planet Earth. And they are these green uh, goo creatures. And then you also have the Tataldians, who are cyborgs with organic brains. And uh, they are also very evil. And uh, the previous volume kind of tied up all of the stuff with the Dressites kind of said, okay, even though the military of the Dressites wiped out all of planet Earth, the rest of the Dressites really aren't that bad. And at the end of that volume, they basically forge an alliance with humanity. And we're told, okay, the Dressites are no longer a threat. And then we are told here, uh, the last threat seemingly is the Tataldians. And the Dressites are going to team up with uh, the human race, what's left of the human race, and destroy the Tataldians. Except the Tataldians are now doing something that basically makes that impossible. And uh, we find out in this book there's actually another species that is arguably even worse than both of them and they are kind of the be all end all threat of this series and I'm not going to reveal who that is just in case you are reading this series uh, as you watch these videos and you maybe haven't read this volume yet but it's a uh, it's a twist that I think works well uh, but ultimately I don't think that it really saves this volume for me because there's a few things here that I just didn't really find worked very well uh, number one uh, for some reason uh, Heath Houston the main character the fear agent he is immune to all this stuff that's going on. Uh, basically, uh, the Tataldians are going back in time and they are altering history so that every species in the universe, they are all Tataldians. So now, he's basically the last non-Tataldian creature. And somehow, he is immune to all of this. And it gives a very nonsensical answer to why. It says, okay, he spent a little bit of time in an alternate universe, so now he is out of phase, and so he is no longer being affected. That doesn't make any sense because uh, his ex-wife slash wife, uh, she was also spending some time in an alternate universe, and she's being affected by all this. So it really feels like uh, Rick Remender kind of wrote himself into a corner here. He had all this stuff going on in this series, and then he wants to find a way for Heath Houston to be able to strike back against these bad guys, and so he just makes some nonsense up. And I feel like that is very bad writing. That's very lazy writing. Uh, if you're going to have all the chips down on the table, if you're going to have the stuff hitting the fan, you need to come up with a better reason for why our main character is not being affected by all of that. Uh, you also might be wondering what's going on with this cover. Why does he look like Sam Elliott instead of, I don't know, Hugh Jackman? Uh, and that's because apparently, for some reason, he's aging like a ridiculous amount of time. Because after uh, some of this book happens, it jumps forward like nine years, and then uh, he's looks like he's, you know, 80. And uh, again, that's kind of just sloppy writing. And I feel like the reason that Reminder did that is because he just wanted to have his character look like an old man instead of looking like he did throughout the entire series. So he comes up with some nonsense reason for why his body is aging a lot faster. And, uh, you know, these little things, they might seem like really little things, but that's like most of this book is I'm reading this and I'm thinking, okay, this doesn't really make any sense. It feels like uh, Remender didn't really put a lot of thought or effort into this thing that's happening in this book. Uh, but in the end, uh, everything is wrapped up a lot better than I thought it would. And I guess that's a, as good of a segue as any into uh, jumping into my thoughts on this series overall. Uh, I will say that Rick Remender is a very hit or miss writer with me. A lot of people out there, they are just absolutely head over heels in love with him. And anything that he writes, they will say is solid gold. Uh, I am not one of those people. People. The very first thing that I read from him was volume one of a creator-owned series called The End League, which was, I'm not even kidding, the worst comic book I've ever read in my entire life. It was abysmal. And then, the next thing I read was Uncanny Avengers, which, uh, the first volume anyway, which was something that I didn't really like, but it was leaps and bounds ahead of The End League. And then I read Uncanny X-Force, the whole run, and I was absolutely head over heels in love with it. I was thinking, finally, here's the Rick Remender that everyone else has been talking about, who's this really fantastic writer, the Uncanny X-Force run. It's awesome. It was one of the best X-Men stories of the last 15 years. And then I read Uncanny Avengers Volume 2, which I liked better than Volume 1. And then I started reading Fear Agent. And, uh, no, I hadn't forgotten that I'm reviewing Fear Agent here. 
And I will say that this series is not nearly as bad as the In League, but it's not as good as Uncanny Avengers Volume 2 or even Uncanny X-Force. Uh, it's not as good as those, but it's not as bad as the In League. Uh, basically, uh, a big problem that I've been having with this series is something that I talked about in this video, is that Reminder will sometimes have something happen in a story. He'll write himself into a corner, and then he'll just come up with some really asinine reason for why that's no longer a problem for his character. In the very first volume, uh, Heath Houston gets uh, like shot in the chest or stabbed in the chest. It's a fatal wound, and then the next volume kind of handles that problem in a way that doesn't really make any sense. It's like, oh, you thought that that was going to be a really serious moment in this series. No, we'll take care of that in a few pages, and then we'll just move on. And when he keeps doing that, and he does that several times throughout this series, it feels like the stakes are no longer there. It feels like they're not high enough for me to actually care about what's going on. When you have stuff happen to your character, and it seems like, whoa, this is serious, the stuff has hit the fan, and then you're like, no, nah, just kidding, he gets out of it somehow, I no longer care because I don't feel like your character is in any danger ever. Uh, and that's kind of what I feel like every time I'm reading Fear Agent. Uh, basically, this whole series is about this uh, guy who has a very cowboyish uh, attitude about him. He's down on his luck. Uh, he's had a whole lot of tragedy hit him throughout his life, so he's uh, very cynical, very jaded, and basically he just doesn't care. And yet he keeps on going for some reason, even though he doesn't really care. And maybe that's because deep down he does care, but he has this facade of, I don't care about anything, I just want to get drunk until I die. And it's really hard for me to care about this guy because nothing can hurt him. Nothing happens. Uh, spoiler alert, huge spoiler alert for the next 15 seconds. If you haven't read this volume, uh, mute the video right now, starting now. Uh, he dies at the very end of this book. Uh, it looks like the sun is like burning him up. I'm 100% sure that Heath Houston does not die at the end of this book. Even though it shows him dying, we've seen so much stuff happen to him. Spoilers are now over. We've seen so much stuff happen to him in this series that... I know that he does not die. He never dies. He cannot possibly die because all this stuff has happened to him throughout this entire series that I no longer feel anything for this guy when anything happens to him. Whether it's good or bad, I just don't feel anything for him anymore. And I feel like that's not a good thing. You really need to have a protagonist that people can care about. And that means not just making the character himself at least a little bit likable so that audiences can read about this character and not want to throw the book against the wall in disgust, you also need to have situations in this book that don't make this character seem like they are 100% impervious to anything happening to them. And that is a problem in this series. And also, I just feel like sometimes it seems like Reminder is just making it up as he goes along. And that's something that I've complained about every time, just about every time in this book uh, that it happens. And it's something that it makes it hard for me to want to read this when it doesn't even seem like Reminder is really putting that much effort into it. It's like, okay, what should happen next? I know, uh, next we'll throw time travel into the mix, and then we'll throw clones and alternate realities, and it just kind of seems like he's just throwing stuff against the wall. And I really was hoping, and maybe this is just a problem on my end, maybe the problem is that I had unrealistic expectations, but I was really hoping that the series would be more uh, cohesive, better written overall, uh, more planned out from the beginning, and I didn't get that with this series. Uh, it's not an awful series. It is enjoyable, but you really need to go into it with lower expectations than what I had. And uh, every volume of the series is not that bad. I still think the best volume of the series might be the one uh, that is almost entirely a prequel, the one that's set uh, before the alien invasion and during the alien invasion. That one was extraordinary. If every volume had been that good, I think this would have been one of the best series of the last 15 years. But as is, it's just kind of there. Uh, I don't feel like a lot of people are really going to uh, care much about this series in the next... Uh, foreseeable future. Uh, even people who are huge Reminder fans, I don't think they're going to give this book much of a second look after they read it. It's just kind of there. Um, those are my overall thoughts of the entire series and of this book. Uh, basically, I was let down. Uh, I didn't want to be let down. I went into this series kind of uh, with high expectations, thinking it was going to be really good after everything I had heard about Reminder's body of work as a whole. But this kind of let me down. Uh, so those are my thoughts on 
Fear Agent Volume 6, Out of Step, as well as the entire series. Uh, what did you guys think of this video? If you liked it, be sure to like this video and share, subscribe, comment. And uh, if you did not like uh, this video, let me know why in the comments below. If you liked this book and you disagree with my opinions, tell me why in the comments below. Tell me what you liked about Fear Agent, the series. And uh, that's all that I have for this video. I hope that you guys uh, have a great rest of the day, and I will see you guys in the future with some other videos. In the meantime, take care. Have a good one.